now. See you in half an hour. Time now is 16 minutes past seven. From applying for jobs to renting homes, people who've grown up in care say they regularly face barriers based solely on their upbringing. Now, across the UK, young people have been campaigning for a change in the law to end discrimination against them. And they've been talking to our reporter, Graham Satchel. I remember a lot of abuse happening at home. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of sort of 3 a.m. random people in our lounge, um, smoking and drinking, and all you knew was if you went downstairs, there was going to be trouble. So you just sort of stayed upstairs and hoped that, yeah, you'd be OK, basically. Elle was taken into care when she was just 10. And she says ever since, people have judged her. I think the assumptions are that I'm some kind of demon child, I'm really badly educated, um, I am going to be in a police station, I'm going to be pregnant, I'm going to be on alcohol and drugs, I'm going to abuse my children. I mean, all of the above, really, <laughs> and more. I'm just really, I'm portrayed as a bad person, but nobody knows me. Hello. Please press ahead when you're ready. Elle has been explaining her situation to her local council. Care experience is often misunderstood. She's part of a campaign to change the perception of people who've grown up in care. I have sat alone in classrooms at break times all of my life. From a Doncaster Council and heartbreaking testimony from Rebecca. Rebecca was also taken into care as a young girl. It's not something I asked for. It was something that happened to me. I was unseen, unheard, and I felt very unloved. Across the country, young people have been lobbying their local authorities. This is Alden Council. Good evening, and thank you for hearing our motion tonight. My name the pictures of Precious as a young girl are deceptive. Her early life was chaotic. She says the stigma faced by people who've grown up in care can be unbearable. Comments like, you're smart for a kid in care, and it's understandable with what you dealt with make us want to pretend to be someone else. Care leavers now say they want protection in law against discrimination, to stop the kind of experience that Faye had when she applied for a job and told them she'd been in care. The reaction was immediate. The look on the interviewer's face, the temperature dropped. I knew I'd made a mistake in telling them and I knew I was not getting that job. non symmetrical model, you've either got care experience or you haven't. Yeah. Elle is meeting Terry, who's leading the campaign for people who've grown up in care to have new protections in law. It would cover housing, employment, education and other services. Care would be a so-called protected characteristic, like gender, race and sexuality. We want to change the care system so that kids are not suffering. If there's one thing that can systemically change and reset the care system, it's understanding care experience people, and you can only get that through protected characteristics. Despite being a key recommendation of last year's independent review of children's social care, the government told us they don't believe there's a consensus that making care experience a protected characteristic would be a positive development. Instead, they say they're extending corporate parenting responsibilities to all government departments. Care still carries a stigma. But care leavers are continuing to fight, and while central government is yet to be persuaded, 31 local authorities have now changed their rules to bring in new protections. Care leavers say the trauma they faced as children shouldn't determine the whole of their lives. Graeme Satchel, BBC News. And of course, our great thanks to Elle, to Rebecca, to Precious, to Faye, who joined us, who spoke to Graeme to tell us about their stories. And some of the phrases, I'm, we're joined now by care campaigner Terry Galloway. Good morning. Good morning. Just some of the phrases when I was hearing, you know, Elle said, people think of you as a demon child. Um, Rebecca talking about being unseen, unloved. And Precious saying, that it's those microaggressions, isn't it? You're smart for someone in care. It's this bias that is is out there, but it, it has a, a long-term impact. Why are you so involved in campaigning now? Because you've had your own experiences. Yeah, people are dying. Um, care experience people are 70% more likely to die. 
prematurely. That's like 20 years off their lives. Um, they, they're only in care because of neglect and abuse and, and trauma. And the, the way the system is, is as they leave care, then that trauma is not resolved because they're butting up against a system that isn't designed for them. Uh, we like a dirty secret kept, kept away. Um, and and policy, note, policy makers need to kind of take note. And when, the, when someone leaves care, that's it. The support's gone, isn't it? You're kind of almost out on your own and... There's limited support there, but all the scaffolding of the care system that keeps you safe and keeps you protected just drops away. So all the predators pounce. You know, your domestic violence, your coercion, your county lines, your criminals, and, and they just go for, for these care leavers because they're looking for love. They're looking for nurture. They're... Yeah, and this is very personal to you. It's not only your life, it's, it's affected other members of your family as well, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I, I grew up in care myself. Uh, I'd live in over 100 places, and it was traumatic. I managed to, to make a life for myself. Uh, but both my siblings lost their children to the care system because that's what norm, you know, sometimes happens. It's just a, a vicious circle. Um, and one day I was at a funeral with my sister, Hazel, and she, it was, it was quite emotional because she was, she was basically saying to me that I feel like I'm going to be next. And, and she was quite ill. She'd lost her children at that point. She was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And, and I had to spend you know, the whole night, really, talking to her and trying to convince her that you're not going to be next. But unfortunately, she was. But in, in trying to convince her, I said that we'd try and use our trauma to, to change the care system. Well, so sorry for your loss, obviously. When, as you reflect now on that, what what are the pla what are the times the places the occasions when something could have changed? I mean, it, it's awful. It almost sounds like she felt like there was an inevitability about the way things went. So where were the markers where someone somewhere could have changed things? Well, well, for Hazel herself, uh, three days before she was actually killed, she was disclosing to statutory services that she felt she was going to die. She was presenting to drug and alcohol services with black eyes and her partner was also in the same treatment. Um, but really, that's tragic. But the tragedy is it's still happening today. So the government, what this campaign is calling for is the government to introduce legislation so that care experience becomes a protected characteristic in UK equality law. So what practically would that mean? What difference would we see? Or would people who have been in the care system see? It's going to raise awareness. It's going to give young people voice. Now, you just saw on those clips, you know, those, those young people, how inspirational they were having voice. Uh, but practically, it's going to mean that decision makers will have to do what's known as equality impact assessments before they make decisions and create policies. Uh, and they currently do that against the nine protected characteristics. So we're asking them for this to be the tenth. So, what, like, can you get so people understand? Well, what's another of those nine? So we get an idea of what... So we've got sex, we've got race, we've got pregnancy, we've got disability. Um, you know, we've got all, all those characteristics. So any time a decision is made in policy, central government, local government, business, they always have to take consideration of how that policy will impact those people with protected characteristics and this recourse to the people with those protected characteristics. And that's how you change things. That's, that's how you get systemic so change. So the government, the Department for Education, has said that it's aware that some local authorities have voluntarily passed motions to treat care experience as a, as a protected characteristic. And we're following this development to see how it impacts on services and supports care leavers. How do you follow it? What, what, what do you tangibly see, you know, that... Well, I, I, I started this campaign uh, between the period of the care review recommending it and the government saying no, uh, because I anticipated that that's what would happen from government. Quite simply, not because they don't care, because they don't understand it, which is why we created this report and delivered it to the government and to the Children's Commissioner. Uh, but for the campaign, we started in Cumberland and literally we're asking local authorities to adopt a motion that treats care experience as if it was a protected characteristic. And we've now got up to 33 councils with Bassett Law passing it last night. That's 20% of the UK population uh, are under this new, this new uh, characteristic. Well, Terry, it's really interesting and clearly really important. 
it, it suggests to me that maybe, you know, a little bit further down the line, we can talk again and see, you know, tangibly what progress has been made mm, and that's who's what you been need helped. To see, I think, yeah. Um, Terry, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. It's 26 minutes past seven. Hundreds of thousands of music fans have descended.